السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ شبہات کا ازالہ پیج کو سبسکرائب کریں اور بیل آئیکن دبائیں سب سے پہلے ویڈیو دیکھنے کے لیے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا کنفلکٹ ان نظام الدین مرکز اے ڈیٹیلڈ انسائٹ پری فیس وی آر پبلشنگ دس اسپیشل ایڈیشن ان انگلش وچ گیوز اے ڈیٹیل انسائٹ ان ٹو دا کنفلکٹ ان نظام الدین مرکز دیٹ ہیز افیکٹڈ دا ہول ورلڈ پارٹ 1 ٹرانسلیشن اف اے ٹاک بائی حافظ یاسر صاحب ٹو دا ریسپانسبل برادرز اف ہماچل پردیش آن 29 جولائی 2018 Hafiz Yasir Sahab is the one who records the audio quest of Maulana Mehboob. The full Urdu talk can be heard by clicking the following link in the description. You can also subscribe to YouTube channel Shubhat Ka Izala for more audios. Part 2 Translation of a talk by Mufti Nawalur Rahman, Chicago Markaz Weekly Mashwara. Note, we have tried our best to make the translation as close as possible. Part 1 Hafiz Yasir Sahab's Bayan to the Responsible Brother of Himachal Pradesh, 29 July 2018. Topics A historical importance of Nizamuddin Markaz and the effort of Maulana Ilyas Rahmatullahi Alayh B how Maulana Yusuf Maulana Inamul Hasan and Maulana Saad became amir C fallacious argument and antiques of world shura D how shura was formed in Nizamuddin Markaz E mashwara pertaining to muntakhab hadith and the shallow argument against its introduction in tabligh F shenanigans surrounding criticism of Maulana Saad by Darul Ulum Deoband translator's note This is a detailed yet succinct bayan exposition of the current crisis in tabligh surrounding Imarat, World Shura, Muntakhab Hadith and Darul Ulum Deoband's criticism of Hazrat Ji Maulana Saad Sahab. Inshallah, if the bayan is read objectively, holistically and with an open mind, all doubts should be cleared. We are continuously being examined by Allah Ta'ala. A person can quickly become engulfed in fitna due to not having ilm, lacking it or having the wrong ilm. Sometimes falsehood adorns itself with haqq. This is why the hadith state to the effect that it's farz on every muslim to acquire that much ilm in order that his necessity are fulfilled Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullah alay heard a voice from the cloud saying I am Jibril to which he replied you are not Jibril you are shaitan why did he give this response because he had ilm shaitan didn't give up he said your ilm saved you to which Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullah alay said my ilm didn't save me my Allah saved me Had he said my ilm saved me Allah Taala would have snatched vilayat here there are four lessons first falsehood adorns itself as haq second shaitan has multiple tricks and will not give up at the first attempt third if shaitan didn't spare abdul qadir jilani how much more vulnerable are we and fourth ilm is important to save oneself from fitna we are living close to qiyama in an age of fitna regarding this era nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated to the effect that a person will wake up in the morning as a believer and at night he'll become a kafir and vice versa one person said to me since this ikhtilaf and intishar in the work of tabligh i have left the work i said to him you haven't learned it's the decision of almighty to deprive you yesterday we were doing for allah today we are also doing for allah we are not doing this work with our focus on personalities like one brother said we should have such basirat istiqamat and yaqeen in this work that even if molana ilyas rahmatullah alay were to return from the grave and say don't do this work of daawat Our response will be we are doing this work as a responsibility of being the ummati of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not because of you people don't give up seeking treatment because of ikhtilaf between doctors the point is we do this work not because of personalities but because it's our purpose and most importantly we are doing it for Allah Allah taala utilize Maulana Ilyas rahmatullah alay to give us this work in kitab it's written that to be accepted to take this work he had cried for 13 years His wife asked him what sadness have overtaken you that you cry so much he replied if you knew then the people in the room crying would be from 1 to 2 for hours he'd cry in the fields and saying oh allah what will happen to the ummah in molana manzur nu'mani's book molana ilyas and his dini daawat he has written that when the mewati is called molana ilyas for the graduation and prize giving for a child who'd become hafiz and he saw the child wearing an earring and loin cloth predominantly worn by hindu men he cried out in agony and saying ya allah this ummat's hafiz through divine inspiration molana ilyas was called to masjid e nabawi to spend three night there during his stay tray through ilham allah taala opened up the work to him thereafter he returned to india allah taala selected banglewali masjid for this work this is the place where hazrat shed tears for 13 years and began the work with the mewatis he invested everything in them including acres of land until he had nothing left 
At which point he said, I have nothing more to give. You'll have to go home. At this, the Mewati said, Miyaji, whatever you eat and drink will have the same. Starvation began in the household of Malana Ilyas. As his family would sit down to eat the leftovers of Jamaats, a call would come from outside saying, Another Jamaat has arrived. Is there any food? They hadn't even taken the first morsel and Malana Ilyas would send the plate out for others to eat. This is the family of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. It is categorically that the right Maulana Ilyas family have over us. The right we cannot fulfill until the day of Qiyamah. Therefore, Markas become Markas through sacrifices. After the sacrifice of Ibrahim a.s., Ismail a.s. and Hajra a.s., Kaaba become the Markas of the world. Markas doesn't just come into existence by an announcement. As the time of Maulana Ilyas passing drew close, he was worried as to who'd oversee the work. He called Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullah Ali and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Raipuri Rahmatullah Ali. Mashwara took place and both these great personalities couldn't decide whether to make Maulana Yusuf or Hafiz Maqbul Sahab Amir. They sought Maulana Ilyas's opinion, who decided that since the people of Mewat had greater allegiance to Maulana Yusuf than to Hafiz Maqbul, Maulana Ilyas made Faisla that his son Maulana Yusuf should be Amir. Prior to his death, he hugged his son and the kitabs say that the entire figure of Malana Ilyas transferred to Malana Yusuf. Malana Yusuf was Amir for approximately 20 years, during which time independence took place and difficult condition arose. In those circumstances, he remained steady fast, despite people telling him Islam and Muslim would be finished in India. They said the work will now happen from Pakistan. Malana Yusuf said, I'll die, but I won't leave India. In some places, it's written that in those 20 years, Malana Yusuf only slept at home on 16 nights. Malana Alimia Nadvi told him several times to sleep at home, but Malana Yusuf would always say, how is it that I tashkil people for four months and I go home and sleep? What answer will I give to Allah on the day of judgment? Maulana Yusuf's wife was ill. He was engaged in Rawangi and Wapsi talk. Maulana Alimia Nadvi encouraged him to go see her. Eventually, he sent his own wife to see Maulana Yusuf's wife. Maulana Yusuf's wife said, Don't say anything to him. He is engaged in his work and I have given him permission. Maulana Yusuf's passing was sudden, therefore he didn't have an opportunity to appoint his successor. Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ali did mashwara and appointed Maulana Inamul Hassan Sahab. To understand Maulana Inamul Hassan's caliber, it's written in Maulana Ilyas and his Dini Dawat that when Maulana Ilyas was about to leave this world, he kept only Maulana Inamul Hassan in the room, on the basis that he had the caliber to distinguish between the angels and shaitan at the time of death. At the time of this incident, he was approximately 28 years old. Maulana Inamul Hassan remained Amir for almost 30 years. Towards the end of his life, when he went to Raivan, he was advised to nominate his successor as his son. That is Maulana Zubairul Hassan. At that time, Maulana Inamul Hassan said, This decision will be made in Nizamuddin, not here. In other words, this is the foundational principle of this work that all major matters will be decided in Nizamuddin. On his return to Nizamuddin Markas, Maulana Inamul Hassan spoke with a senior Maulana Ubaidullah Khan Sahab Balyawi. I've been in your company for 30 years. I have never seen you do anything against Sira. My opinion is therefore to stick with Sira in this matter. Sira says that Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu made a shura of six people prior to his demise and instructed them to select an Amir between themselves. Thereafter, in 1993, when Maulana Inamul Hassan went for Hajj, all the world's zimdars gathered. Hazrat put forward the op Hazrat put forward the proposal and selected an eight-person shura. The eight peoples were Maulana Izhar Sahab, Maulana Zubair Sahab, Maulana Umar Sahab, all from India. Maulana Sayyid Ahmed Khan Sahab, Mufti Zainul Abidin Sahab, Haji Abdul Wahab Sahab, and Bhai Afzal Sahab, all from Pakistan. Haji Abdul Muqit Sahab from Bangladesh. Maulana Inamul Hassan told these eight peoples to gather in Nizamuddin after Hajj for Mashwara. When they gathered, Maulana Inamul Hassan increased the eight to ten, one of them being Maulana Saad Sahab, the other being Miyaji Mehrab Sahab. He told them, if I die, select an Amir from amongst yourself. This was in accordance with what Hazrat Umar anhu did prior to his demise. To now start a propaganda and impliedly defame Maulana Inamul Hassan by saying he went away from Sira by giving this work over to Ashura is nothing short of slander. To prove their stance, World Shura then put forward the malfus of Maulana Ilyas that he intended the work to run according to Shurayat. If that's the case, why were two Amirs appointed after him? Even an, even an ignoramus can understand the fallacy of the argument. Who are they trying to fool and deceive? After the demise of Hazrat Ji Maulana Inamul Hassan, all the shura he had selected were present. 
except bhai afzal sahab who was unable to obtain visa nine of them gathered and did mashwara for 3 days now the proof that this mashwara did take place and it was for the selection of an amir look no further than the words of haji sahab himself a year ago a clip of his was made viral on whatsapp wherein he states after the demise of hazrat when we gathered for mashwara molana saad sahab's opinion was if you make molana zubair amir my people will be cut off and if you make me amir molana zubair's people will be cut off this opinion can only be given if the mashwara took place to select an amir otherwise why else would such an opinion be given in addition if the work was given over to ashura what exactly was being done in mashwara for 3 days the faisal of the shura was miyan ji mehab sahab three people said molana zubair should be amir three said molana saad should be amir molana saad sahab's opinion was that whoever we choose it's going to be problematic molana zubair was silent and haji sahab told molana izhar that this is not the time to keep quiet tell us what your opinion is after the third day miyan ji mehab sahab entered the masjid and announced as follows from now on three peoples will take this work forward molana izhar molana zubair and molana saad since there was no consensus three amirs have been selected people ask who made molana saad amir we say miyan ji mehrab sahab made him amir within the four walls of nizamuddin markaz the irony is that ones who object were present at the time the faisla was made so why they are asking the question 6 months after the faisla was made molana izhar passed away for approximately 18 years thereafter molana zubair and molana saad were responsible for running the effort they took it in turn to be faisal whenever an issue of critical importance arose whoever was the faisal at that time would not make a decision until he had consulted the other example when molana zubair was faisal an important issue pertaining to a particular country was brought to his attention and he was asked to make a decision at the time molana saad was in kandla molana zubair deferred decision making until molana saad's return more than 3 days later molana zubair passed away in 2014 this left molana saad sahab as the decision maker as an aside the biggest promoter of lies today is whatsapp soon after molana zubair's demise rivan ishtima took place some hazrats registered complaints with haji sahab saying we made this shura and it needs finalizing molana tariq jamil's audio is available regarding the making of world shura he said that we made world shura presented it to haji sahab who signed it and when it was presented to molana saad sahab he rejected it molana saad sahab's explanation for rejecting was that indian political situation was and is not conducive to adopting world shura molana saad sahab stated that there's alami mashwara in tongi raivan and at the time of hajj but there would be no alami shura His opinion was and is that each country that is Pakistan India and Bangladesh should have their own shura at the time Pakistan and Bangladesh already had their own shura hence Maulana Saad sahab promised Haji sahab that on his return to India he would make their shura too Maulana Saad sahab put the following point to Maulana Arshad Madni a man of politics he said if a committee of Nizamuddin we allow somebody from Pakistan to be in it will the Indian government not be suspicious If we listen carefully to what Maulana Tariq Jamil said on this issue, he said we made world shura, meaning neither Haji Sahab nor Maulana Saad Sahab made a world shura, and they were not consulted about it at the time it was being made. Question: Whether two surviving members of Maulana Inamul Hasan's shura not deserving of being consulted when the shura was being made, was it not their prerogative to make a world shura? These people who made world shura knew that the concept wouldn't be accepted if Maulana Saad and Haji Sahab were part of the consultation so they made a shura and presented it to both Haji Sahab and Maulana Saad Sahab question who is this we that Maulana Tariq Jamil is referring to in other words who made world shura from 6th to 8th december 2015 a jor for old workers took place in nizamuddin on 7th december 2015 between maghrib and isha sala molana saad mentioned to the gathering that in raivan he promised haji sahab that india would make its own shura and therefore the time had come to make it molana saad sahab's opinion was two people from each state should form india's shura totally totaling approximately 50 people the people said if such a shura is made how many times will people be called from different states and how often will they be able to come for mashwara molana ibrahim deola's opinion was that a shura should be made from the muqimin of the markaz and they should also have been present in the markaz from the time of molana inamul hasan molana saad asked for names 
द नेम्स गिवन वे मौलाना इब्राहिम दियोला मौलाना अहमद लाल साहब मौलाना जहेर उल हसन मौलाना साद मौलाना याकूब मियाँ जी अजमत साहब प्रोफेसर अब्दुल आलिम साहब एंड मौलाना अब्दुल सत्तार मौलाना साद साहब देन रिक्वेस्टेड दैट हिज सन मौलाना यूसुफ बी पार्ट ऑफ द शूरा एज ही हैड जस्ट रिटर्न फ्रॉम वन ईयर एंड इन द कंपनी ऑफ द एल्डर्स ही कुड लर्न द वर्क Everybody agreed to this proposal. These nine names were written down, and Maulana Saad asked Maulana Ibrahim and Maulana Ahmed Lard to sign the paper. They said there is no need. Maulana Saad insisted that they sign. So Maulana Ibrahim, Maulana Ahmed Lard, and Maulana Yaqub signed. The shura was therefore formed in front of them on 8th December before dua. This shura was completed. After completion, three further names were put forward by Mushtaq Mumbai, Mufti Shahzad Bhopal, and Maulana Jamshed. But this opinion was rejected on the basis that they were not present from the time of Manana Inamul Hasan. Manana Saad from the time Manana Saad Saab agreed that they should be omitted and that they could be added later on. Farooq Bhai Bangalore wrote the names down, obtained the signatures, and on the instruction of Manana Saad Saab, he sent the paper to Haji Saab. Now, if people don't present themselves in mashwara, is it their own error or is it Manana Saad Saab's fault? For seven months after formation of this shura. Work continued with these nine individuals attending mashwara. In Ramadan, a masla arose. Trouble started and fight broke out. This was used as an excuse to leave markas. Those that left markas being chanting shura shura, knowing that a shura had been made in Nizamuddin and they were and that they were a part and that they were a part of it. Most of the decisions in Nizamuddin are made in tajweez. Maulana Saad on almost all occasions merely endorses that which shura or tajweez decide. Go sit in the mashwara and witness yourself. And if anything needs changing, muzakara takes place and the decision is changed. Therefore, the propaganda that Maulana Saad Saab implements whatever he feels like is incorrect. Bearing all the aforementioned in mind, if some people choose to separate, is it really of any concern that they have, metaphorically speaking, opted to open their own shop? When they say that there should be a shura and rotating vessel, ask them who should be the rotating vessel, and they will gallantly submit their own names. If they are fighting for somebody else, then we can understand. But these people are fighting for their own position in within world shura. Hazrat says that whoever focuses on their own qurbani will be desirous of status, and if they don't obtain it. they will start a fitna therefore we shouldn't look at our sacrifices we should focus on our weaknesses and omissions how many taleem gasht mashwara etc have i missed we hear these slogans that we have been doing the work for 40 or 50 years we are puranas is it these very people that are being followed by the layman who then incredulously ask can puranas be wrong the real question is why can't they be wrong When Aisha radhiyallahu anha was falsely accused of adultery by the hypocrites, two Badri Sahaba, Hazrat Hasan radhiyallahu anhu and Hazrat Mista radhiyallahu anhu, joined them. Do we know the status of a Badri Sahabi? If Sahabi of this stature can be affected by conditions and circumstances, can elders not be affected by conditions and circumstances? Those that say Puranas can't make mistake should consider that the most Purana was Shaitan. He was the Malvi of the angels and had worshipped for approximately 0.6 million years. Did he make a mistake? The other propaganda is that reading of Muntakhab Hadis wasn't decided through mashwara. In fact, that mashwara took place in Mecca after the book was completed, compiled in the late 1990s. In mashwara during Hajj, the decision was made to read Muntakhab, and that Haji Sahab would start talim on that day before Maghrib at Kaaba Tullah. Prior to Maghrib Salah, however, certain Hazrat put Haji Sahab under such duress, saying that the kitab should not be read. He was told, "Look whose name is on the kitab." Such pressure was put on him that he was unable to attend Maghrib Salah in the Haram. On returning to Nizamuddin from Hajj, mashwara was done for a second time, and the final decision, despite difference of opinion, was that muntakhab should be read. People fallaciously argue that if every amir introduce a new kitab for talim then jamaat will end up carrying a set of books for information fazail e amal is not one book it's six books bound into one and the seventh is fazail e sadaqa so in mulana ilyas time five separate book had been written the talim of fazail e hajj and fazail e sadaqa commenced in mulana yusuf's time therefore seven books were read During his imarat, Maulana Inam al Hasan introduced the eighth book, Muslim Degeneration and Its Remedy. If the Amirs subsequent to Maulana Ilyas introduced new book within the effort, was that a need to shout and scream when Maulana Saad Saab introduced Talim of Muntakhab Adis? Therefore, the real objection is why Maulana Saad Saab's name is on the kitab. 
If his name is removed, then there's no objection. The objection is therefore based on prejudice. Mashwara is to obey the Amir even if he opts for the minority opinion. Prior to Mashwara, opinions can differ, but after a decision is made, everyone's opinion must be one. At the time of Ohad, all Sahaba's opinion was that they should go towards Ohad and fight. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's desire was that they should defend by standing in Medina. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, based on Sahaba's instance, decided that they should go out of Medina and fight. When Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam went in his house to get ready, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radhiyallahu anhum explained to the rest of Sahaba that the Nabi's desire was that they should defend by remaining in Medina. When Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam emerged from his house, all Sahaba united and said that if it's Nabi's desire to stay in Medina and defend, we'll stay in Medina and fight. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the effect that once a Nabi arms himself. He does not put his weaponry down. In other words, the message was mashwara was done and everybody should abide by the decision. In the battle, 70 sahaba were maitred. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was wounded and become unconscious. Yet in approximately 8 years that he lived after Ahad, not once did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam either elusively or by indication suggested to sahaba that this had all occurred because they had not listened to him. This is because the principle of mashwara is that after mashwara, everyone's opinion is the same. Apply this principle of mashwara to Hazrat Maulana Saad Sahab's decision in Nizamuddin that Muntakhab Ahadi should be read in Talim. Despite opposition to reading this kitab, the principle is that once the decision was made, everybody should have united on that decision. Instead, after the mashwara, some people said, this was not our opinion. How was this decision made? These people therefore concluded that they won't allow the kitab to be read, thereby opposing the decision of Mashwara. The last issue to discuss relates to Darul Ulum Deoband's criticism of Malana Saad Sahab's bayans. This is being used as a weapon when they state that he interprets verses according to his own opinion or uses opinions that are not that of the Jamhur. When Maulana Arshad Madni visited Maulana Saad regarding this issue, Maulana Saad Saab produced 27 Arabic tafsirs and informed Maulana Arshad Madni that his bayans were from the 27 tafsirs that he'd produced. By virtues of our quest, we have requested Darul Ulum Deoband on numerous occasions that all the statements that have objections on, they should take each statement and prove it to be incorrect through authentic sources. Malana Salman Sahab, the principal of Mazahirul Ulum Saharangpur, has tashkiled a group of ulama to investigate all of Malana Saad Sahab's bayans. Some bayans were based on taqwa and were kept separate. Other bayans references were found in tafsirs. It's not necessary for an alim to have every tafsir in front of him. Tafsirs will be different. Simple example, in Fazal Tabliq, the verse Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasana is mentioned. Hazrat Sheikh mentions the various opinions of Sahaba in relation to the tafsir of the word Hasana. Recently, an objection was that Mulana Saad Saab said that with ashab e Kahf, there was a lion and not a dog. Yes, the majority of the Jamhur say that it was a dog and not a lion. But this does not mean that there can be an outright rejection stating that it was not a lion. Because Ibn Juraiz Rahmatullahi Alayhi Atabari says that Kalbuhum can mean lion too. The fact that we take the preferred opinion doesn't automatically mean outright rejection of an opposing view. Another issue pertains to misrepresentation. Maulana Saad Sahab did not say, whoever takes a wage for Quran, he said whoever uses deen to earn dunya, he will go to Jahannam before an adulterer. And this is the reference from volume 3 of Hayatu Sahaba, wherein Mujahid Rahmatullah Ali state that Hazrat Umar Razillahu Anhu said, whoever earns his dunya via deen, he will go to Jahannam before an adulterer. So these are not the words of Maulana Saad Sahab, these are the words of Umar Razillahu Anhu. Further, Maulana Saad Sahab issued a retraction on all issues where objections were raised in matters where he'd spoken on the basis of taqwa. For example, Maulana Saad Sahab has ceased mentioning that it is impermissible to perform salah with a camera mobile in one's pocket. Question, what do people want after retraction? The words can't be taken back. He can only refrain from saying the same thing in future. Lastly, regarding the story of Musa alayhi salam, what has habitually been brought up as a stick to beat him with, the issue was with the matter in which Maulana Saad Sahib has mentioned the story. That is, the tone adopted was not conducive to honoring a great Nabi. Since the Maulana Saad Sahib has been prohibited from narrating this incident, he'd never mentioned it since. 
The pertinent point to understand is the game that is being played here. Some issues raised in 2016's fatwa were mentioned in 2001 in Mina Bazar Ijtima, the audio of which is available on YouTube. After 15 years, a fatwa is issued on these matters. What were Darululum doing for 15 years? Is it the objective to help Deen or is the objective to help the dissenting voices that left the Merkaz? When Deoban told Molana Saad Sahab to issue a retraction without any resort to alternative potential interpretations, Molana Saad Sahab wrote to Deoban. He stated that the evidence is available. I am ready to issue a retraction without resort to any alternative potential interpretations. And I adhere to the maslak of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And until the day I die, I'll remain on this. If you think what I am saying is unreliable, go to Deoban yourself. And verify what I have said or phone Mufti Sahab. I have his number. Day before yesterday, when Bangladesh Ulma issued a fatwa stating that Maulana Saad Sahab was outside the fall of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Mufti Abdul Qasim Darululum Deoban clarified stating, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We have never said Maulana Saad Sahab has exited from Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We had some issued with bayanats which were publicized. So, my dear brothers, Allah has given us this work. Join it and the point of reference for the work is Nizamuddin. And Maulana Saad Sahib is from that family which has sacrificed everything for this effort. Who doesn't make mistake? A man is talking for 6 hours and you don't expect him to slip up. Is that we are saying? And if an error is made rather than spread it all over the world in order to disgrace a person, we should be doing tawil instead. Do we think we are not going to be answerable to Allah? Like when Allah Wala said, if you disrespect or dishonor an alim of deen, then in the grave your face will be turned away from qibla. People have no shame. A family that sacrificed everything for us and we deal with their son in this manner? Those who left the Merkaz have not adopted the correct method of ikhtilaf. In Sirah, there are two narrations that will clarify this issue. One pertains to Sa'ad bin Ubada radiallahu anhu and the other pertains to Abu Zar Ghiffari radiallahu anhu. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Ansar said Sa'ad bin Ubada radiallahu anhu will be our Amir. And they got ready to pledge allegiance. The Muhajir said Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu will be our Amir. Umar radiallahu anhu said, I heard Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying to the effect that the Ummah will have one Amir only. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated to the effect that if there is one Amir and another raises his head in this matter, he should be executed, no matter how pious he is. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned to the effect that if your imam's fajir or sinner and he leads people in salah at the wrong time, you must perform salah behind him and not create fitna in the ummah. This is the extent to which the ijtimaiyat of the ummah been protected. Are these masalas in tabligh today as grave as performing salah outside its correct time? So Hazrat Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu was ready to become the Amir of the Ansar. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu said the Amir will be one and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu the Amir. Therefore everybody pledged allegiance to Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu except four Sahaba. Three of them eventually pledged allegiance but Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu didn't. Despite not pledging allegiance, he didn't leave Medina, he didn't oppose Abu Bakr anhu's imarat and nor did he undertake a majlis or mashwara to oppose him. That is there was no propaganda on this. That is there was no propaganda on his part. Therefore the lessons are that even if one doesn't regard a person as Amir, he should stay put and keep silent. Second, if people were unwilling to pledge allegiance to the greatest personality after the prophets, that is Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, do we expect everybody to pledge allegiance to Maulana Saad? No. However, we advise the people who left Merkaz to do what Saad bin Ubada anhu did. Despite ikhtilaf, he didn't leave Medina, nor did he exit from Mashwara. This is what Sira teaches us. Who advised you to do ikhtilaf, leave the Merkaz? and make an effort to set up an alternative markers, thereby cutting people off from Nizamuddin markers. The second narration pertains to Abu Zar Ghiffari Razillahu Anhu's ikhtilaf with Hazrat Usman Razillahu Anhu. As a result, Hazrat Usman Razillahu Anhu did mashwara and following that, he advised Hazrat Abu Zar Razillahu Anhu to pass his living days at a place called Rabza. He obeyed and on his deathbed, he informed his wife to cook food. She said, who will eat it? You're about to pass away. He informed her that the Jamaat would be arriving to perform ghusl, shroud and bury him and that on their arrival, the Jamaat should be fed. After a while, she saw a Jamaat returning from Hajj and indicated to them 
She explained that her husband was about to pass away and that they should bathe, shroud and bury him. Hazrat Abu Zar anhu obeyed and separated on the basis of mashwara. Therefore Allah Ta'ala made an arrangement for his ghusl, shrouding and burial. We conclude from these incidents that Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu had ikhtilaf but he did not separate from the Amir of his own accord and Abu Zar Ghiffari radiallahu anhu separated because it was decided in mashwara. So my dear brothers, Allah Ta'ala made this effort flourish for approximately 100 years with Ijtimaiyat. Some opportunist individual had sought to take advantage. We should not follow them. The work we have been doing until today. Continue with it and join with Nizamuddin Markers like you were doing. If you have any doubt, submit your questions to the Markers. A person came to Hazrat Ji Maulana Saad Sahab with 25 questions. Maulana Saad Sahab said, Your questions will definitely be answered, but you have to undergo a little hardship. The person agreed. Maulana Saad Sahab said, You'll have to stay here for 72 hours and participate in every majlis from beginning to end. After three days, Maulana Saad Sahab called him and said, I'll now give you the answers to those 25 questions. The person replied, There's no need. I, ap- I obtained all the answers. Nizamuddin's are markers for the work and Darululum Deoband's are markers of ilm. They are like both eyes. We don't wish to blind either. Allah's qasam, the ahsan that Nizamuddin markers has over us, is the same ahsan that Darululum Deoband has over us. Mashwara pertaining to the effort of Dawat and Tabligh will be done with Nizamuddin and consultation pertaining to Ta'aleem will be done with Darululum Deoband. A farmer does mashwara with another farmer. He doesn't do mashwara with a doctor as to when he should water his field. Lastly, if anything has been said wrong in this talk, then this is my own error. And I seek forgiveness from you all. First, we will obey Nizamuddin Markaz, then our own Markaz, and then our local masjid's Amir. Quran also adopts this format. First, obey Allah, then his Rasul, and thereafter your Amir. A person will obey his father first, and then...